So somebody asked me um, what I think of Overeaters Anonymous. I thought, I don't really know that. I mean, like, I know what I think I think of Overeaters Anonymous, but I've never, like, actually looked into it or tried being on their website or anything. So I'm just on their website now. And it's like, it says it's a 12-step fellowship program, much like Alcoholics Anonymous. One day at a time approach. Um, all right, terms and concepts. Abstinence, the art, the act of refraining from compulsive food behaviours while working towards maintaining a healthy body weight. So, oh dear, you know what I'm going to say about that, don't you? What that is basically translating is abstinence, the act of restricting food while working towards suppressing your body weight. Really, that's what that means, isn't it? Oh dear. All right. Um, tools. We have nine tools that help us focus on focus that help focus us while we work on a program of recovery including a plan of eating which basically means a plan of restriction sponsorship i don't really know what that means i guess it means mentoring meeting communications action plan anonymity and service so the plan of eating gives us a daily guide to avoid trigger foods and any destructive eating behaviors which basically means this is your this is your nicely set out plan of how to restrict today and so then it talks about sponsors, which are people that have been through it, face-to-face -face meetings, telephones, and all of those things. But, you know, all right, so I think I've had enough of the website now to get an idea of what I think of Overeaters Anonymous. So it's trying to stop people who think that they are eating too much food. It's, it's, trying, to, it's trying to help them restrict better, I guess is what it's saying. So then also what I gather from the website, it's just like, we can help anyone, anyone who thinks that they're eating too much food, we can help them. And now that's why I've, I've had some clients that have said to me before that they've been, you know, some people with, it doesn't matter what, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder, all range of clients. And, and some people said to me that they, have, you know, been involved with Overeaters Anonymous because they thought they're an overeater because of their binge episodes. Now I'm going to say, oh, well, those binge episodes because you're restricting, aren't they? And so the problem with Overeaters Anonymous is because they're not looking at it biologically. They're looking at saying, all right, this person's binging and we have to help this person stop the binge. Whereas I'm going to say this person's binging because they're restricting. The binge is a response to restriction. And so the binge, good luck trying to stop that. I mean, I guess you could try. It's going to be painful though, isn't it? <laughs> It's just like, you can stop the binging if you're really, really focused on it and you basically don't buy any foods in your house other than carrots and apples and you just let yourself only eat those and, and lock yourself in a hole for the rest of your life and avoid food at all costs. Then you could stop binging. But the second somebody brings you round a cake for your birthday, it's all over, isn't it? It's like, you might be able to just have that one slice while they're there. And then as soon as they're out the door, the whole cake is going down the hatch, isn't it? You can't ever really, it's never that you get rid of this. The, if you're restricting, you don't stop the binging. You just postpone it. If you're, if you try really, really hard, you can postpone the binging. And so it's just kicking the can. You can do this 12 step thing and you, you know, you're putting all these measures in place to not allow yourself to binge. But basically, because you're restricting, you're just kicking the can down the road. And that binge is going to come and it's going to hit you like a freight train when it does. And then you're going to feel like shit because you've been told that you shouldn't binge and it feels like you fell off the wagon. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you've failed. And I'm just going to say, no, you, you didn't because that was never how it was supposed to go. The binge is there because you're restricting let the binges happen just just let it happen it's fine focus on not restricting and once you are your your brain and your body are convinced that there's ample food in the environment and that food is going to keep on coming enough of it without restriction then the need to binge will go away and that's actually how you stop binging it's not like not not resisting the binge but by actually eating so that you're lovely body doesn't feel the need to do that anymore because it's not like your body's just like i want to binge like nobody's body wants to do that that's not comfortable for the body to take on that amount of food you should see the amount of food i could take on at one time i felt like i was going to explode that's not nice it's not comfortable the body doesn't want to do that it's doing it 
because it has to. It feels that it's backed into a corner, which is what your restrictions done to it. And I think that the the biggest problem that sticks out to me with all of this, because I think that say if someone is really thin, then I can say that, and that say if someone's really thin and they're binging, and I can say, well, they're binging because they're restricting. So you should just let them binge, let them eat as much as you want. People are sort of okay with that and they can see that better. But if somebody's not really thin, <laughs> And they're binging because they're restricting. And I say, you should just stop the restriction. Leave the binges alone. They'll be fine. Let it happen. Then people have a problem with that. And it's just the only difference is the size of the body. And so I think a lot of the time people go to Overeaters Anonymous because they're not in a super skinny body. And so they're not being told it's all right to binge. They're being told, mm, mm, yeah, you should stop that. That's bad. And it just shows how body weight makes us makes people blind. You can't see the same fucking symptoms going on in two different persons just because one is one size and the other is the other size. You don't. If the symptoms are the same, you should treat the thing the same. And if the symptom is restriction, which also is resulting in binging, for the, if the treatment for the skinny person is to get them to eat so that they no longer need to binge, the treatment for the not skinny person should also be to get them to eat so that they no longer need to binge. So all in all, I think Overeaters Anonymous, barking up the wrong tree. That's the polite way of putting it. I think you're barking up the wrong tree, Overeaters Anonymous.